In this video, we will compare pica syndrome, the posterior inferior cerebellar artery syndrome, and the medial medullary syndrome or Dejerian syndrome. Pica syndrome affects the lateral part of the medulla and also the cerebellum, whereas medial medullary syndrome affects the medial part of the medulla. We'll compare the structures affected in these two syndromes and their clinical features. The pica syndrome is the most common cause of brain stem stroke. Medial medullary syndrome or Dejerian syndrome is the second most common cause of the brain stem stroke. What's the cause of pica syndrome? It's the atherosclerotic thrombotic or embolic occlusion of the vertebral artery or posterior inferior cerebellar artery. Most cases are due to occlusion of the vertebral artery. Some are due to pica occlusion. Only the fourth segment of the vertebral artery gives branches to the brain stem and cerebellum. What's the cause of medial medullary syndrome? It's due to obstruction to blood flow to the medial part of the medulla. So what's the blood supply of the medial part of the medulla? Anterior spinal artery supplies the medial part of the medulla oblongata. This is the medial part of the medulla supplied by the anterior spinal artery. This is the portion of the supply of the different parts of medulla. This is the vertebral arteries area that supplies the lateral portion, posterior spinal artery supplying posteriorly and anterior spinal artery supplying the medial part of the medulla. What's the origin of vertebral artery? On the right side it arises from the innominate artery and on the left side it arises from the subclavian artery. How vertebral artery enters the brain? What's the course? It passes through the foramina of the upper six cervical vertebrae, passes through the foramen magnum to enter into the cranial cavity and unite with the other vertebral artery to form the basilar artery. Basilar artery on the other end is connected to the circle of villus. And what's the origin of posterior inferior cerebellar artery? Posterior inferior cerebellar cerebellar artery is a branch of the vertebral artery. What's the origin of the anterior spinal artery? Two branches, one from each vertebral artery just before its termination unite to form the anterior spinal artery run in front of the medulla and the anterior spinal fissure. What's the cause of medial medullary syndrome? Atherosclerotic thrombotic or embolic occlusion of the anterior spinal artery. It supplies the caudal front of the medulla and which vertebral artery segment occlusion causes pica syndrome? Occlusion of the intracranial or V4 or the last segment of the vertebral artery or posterior inferior cerebellar artery causes Wellenberg syndrome. What are the structures affected by posterior inferior cerebellar artery syndrome? The one structure in the brain, cerebellum, inferior surface of the cerebellum and inferior cerebellar peduncle. Two tracts, spinothalamic tract and the descending sympathetic tract shown in green circles here and three cranial nerve, five, eight, and the nucleus ambiguous. Five trigeminal nerve and its branches, the vestibular nerve, eight cranial nerve, and the nucleus ambiguous cranial nerve, nine glossopharyngeal and tenth vagus and accessory eleventh. So what structures are affected in medial medullary syndrome or Dejerian syndrome? Three structures that are affected are pyramid, the medial lemniscus, and the hypoglossal nerve. See, this is the hypoglossal nerve passing through after it arrives from the hypoglossal nucleus, the 12th cranial nucleus. So what are the clinical features of the lateral medullary syndrome? Ipsilateral cerebellar ataxia from the involvement of restiform nucleus and there is dysmetria. What's dysmetria? Past pointing. Patient fails to touch the target. Examples are finger nose test and finger to finger test. And the two tracks that are involved are descending sympathetic tract. Interruption of that causes Harner syndrome and the triad of symptoms for the 
Horner syndrome are ipsilateral meiosis and hydrosis and ptosis. And the second tract involved is the spinotelemic tract, which causes contralateral loss of pain and temperature on the body surface, shown here in brown color, causing loss of pain and temperature on the opposite side. And the cranial nerve involvement 5, 8, and nucleus ambiguous. Involvement of the cranial nerve 5. Trigeminal involvement causes loss of pain and temperature and numbness and abnormal sensation over half of the face, the ipsilateral side. Cranial nerve 8 vestibulocochlear nerve involvement causes dizziness, vertigo, diplopia and nystagmus. Cranial nerve 8 is connected to the third, fourth and sixth cranial nerve nuclei, the oculomotor, trochlear and abdicin nerve nuclei via the medial longitudinal fasciculus. We have discussed this in the other videos on lateral and the vertical gaze palsy. The nucleus ambiguous, cranial nerve 9, glossopharyngeal, 10th, vagus and 11th accessory. There involvement causes dysphagia, dysphonia, dysarthria, hoarseness due to larynx, pharynx, palatal and due to vocal cord paralysis. What are the clinical features of the medial medullary syndrome? The clinical features are that of involvement of the medial medulla supplied by anterior spinal artery. The corticospinal pyramidal tract damage will cause contralateral spastic hemiparesis and hemiplegia causes contralateral upper motor neuron type of lesion with spastic paresis. There is upper motor neuron type of lesion with weakness, spasticity, hypertonia, hyperreflexia and a positive Babinski. Involvement of the medial lemniscus causes loss of position, vibration and fine touch sensations. What's medial lemniscus? Medial lemniscus is the continuation of the dorsal column of the spinal cord which ascends ipsilaterally up to the nucleus cuneatus and nucleus crassalis in the medulla from the upper and lower half of the body respectively. They cross over as medial lemniscus to the thalamus and end in the sensory cortex in the postcentral gyrus. Medial lemniscus involvement causes loss of fine touch, vibration and proprioception on the contralateral side of the body. Medial lemniscal fibers they cross over. So if the medial lemniscal fibers are damaged then it causes contralateral loss of sensations. What are the effects of hypoglossal nerve lesion? Involvement of the hypoglossal nerve will cause lower motor neuron type of flaccid paralysis, weakness, fasciculation and atrophy of the tongue ipsilaterally. Protrusion of the tongue causes deviation to the same side or the weak side. Why? Due to the strong action of the opposite side. There is no facial abnormality in medial medullary syndrome. Two branches, one from each vertebral artery just before its termination unite to form the anterior spinal artery.